Hey yo man, what's up man? This your man's Obi Trice, man. I'm right here chilling, posted in Toronto with Montreality. Um, well my story is, is, is one that's uh, based from, you know, growing up in the hood. Schoolcraft and Greenfield is where I'm from. Uh, where, you know, a lot of, a lot of, um, um, less fortunate things has happened to a lot of people I know and also also myself. Detroit is where I'm from. It's a real uh, mecca of music, you know, a real soulful town. A lot of music has came out of that out of that city, you know, from even back in the day with the Motowns. You know, all those things was kind of a part of a, a part of my inspiration for making music as well. Uh, what type of student I was in the classroom? I paid attention. I listened to the teachers. I paid attention. You know, I wasn't really hands-on with the with the um, assignments like that. But you know, I was cool. I had my silly days. You know, I had the days when you just didn't want to be there. You know, it, just depending on where I was at. Yeah. I had a few jobs growing up. I, I worked at uh, Ogre's Kitchen before. You know, I, um, I also did uh, little odd jobs where I, I sold candy from door to door I had to lay down this whole entire speech and solicit the candy you know to, to, to old Jewish white white folks you know what I'm saying who you know would listen and and, and um, kind of like uh, buy all my candy up so you know I had a few jobs here and there you know I also uh, worked at a shoe store like a foot locker it was called a foot action. My first big paycheck, uh, I think I bought a crib, you know, um, you know, gave my mother uh, a, a nice, some, uh, substantial amount of it, and that's basically it, you know, took care of my daughter. You know, this game, this hip-hop game is so competitive, you know, it's, it's, it's constantly uh, changing and you just want to stay involved, you know, that's, that's the big... That's the key to it, you know. I, I think that um, this little, you know, plight that I, I, I need to do to, to to get back, you know, relevant and all these types of things, it, it probably wouldn't have happened if I if I would have uh, stayed in the game. But you know, you know, the music thing is, is is just a part of my life, though. It's something that I love to do, but also, you know, I have a life outside of it. With that said, I, I think that you need to have, you know, kind of a perfect balance with it, you know, so you can, you know, move with your your, your personal life and also your, your career and, and and you know, I think that's the key to success, just 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 constantly staying with it. Yeah, I'm a I'm a book reader, I'm into books. The Empire books, you know, the Broadway Empire books. I like motivational books, you know, I like books that that uh you know, you take from it and you just try to apply it to your own life, you know, I'm into, I'm into books. Uh, if I was to write a book, <clears throat> I probably would call it um, Schoolcraft, you know, because, uh, like I say, that's where I'm from. It's just a, a, a great story. It's a story about, it would be a story about just a lot of things that's internally going on with me that, that I've adapted from that neighborhood. So. That's what I'll probably name it. And then turn it into a movie, you know. That's, that's basically all I'm into, really. You know, I, I, I like fashion, I like getting into clothes, and I also uh, like to write, you know, so, you know, I wanna get into the screenplays and things. But, you know, for the most part, it is it is the music is, is what I'm into. Previous lifetime, if, if, if that was the case, uh, could have been a, a wolf or something. I don't know exactly. The hawk. Yeah. My biggest fear is whales. Yeah. Blue whales. My last meal. What would I choose to eat? Probably um, crab legs and a, and, and a baked potato. You know, dipped in some butter, and, you know, the, or the whole hookup. I, I really like the, 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 you know, like the biographies, you know what I'm saying? Like Bugsy Siegel and Al Capone, the real shit. You know, I like to watch those, you know. Um, gangster movie, 
Scarface, you know, known Belly. Well, well, Nate Dogg is just like a real um, smooth type of brother, man. He's, a, you know, he's he don't do a lot of talking. He's very much about the business, the music. It was one point where I was in I was in uh, L.A. and we were supposed to get in the studio. And Interscope Raps took me out instead. You know, Nate Dog, you know, called me like, yo, oh, this, where you at? Where you at? I'm like, I'm coming, man. They got me over here. They got me this way. He's like, he's like, man, this is a business, oh. This is a business, you know. So I, ne I never forget that. Basically, come on, let's get this work in, you know. And, you know, then we could go party, but it really wasn't me, it was the reps at Interscope was moving me around like that, so they, I, I guess they didn't feel like it was necessary for me to be in a Nate Dog uh, studio at the time, but you know, uh, what I know now, you know, that never would have happened, you know, I would have been straight, straight there with him. Well, he had a baby with my first cousin, so that's how we found that out. He didn't know his daughter, his daughter was like eight. When, when, when he found out, I've been with him four years prior to him finding out. So, you know, I asked my bonehead ass cousin, you know, why are you just not telling me this? You know, and so she's real passive, you know, don't, don't sweat nobody, you know. And uh, she gave me a picture of him, and I just ended up uh, taking a picture to proof. And he looked at it, and he was just like, who is this? You know, I was like, who, who does she look like? He was like, wow, she looks like me. You know, I was just like, yeah, that's your, that's your little girl, man. And so he got tight with her all the way up to his, his death. But, you know, he's, he's not actually my birth cousin. He's just family, you know, through that situation. Probably Jay-Z, Kanye, Nas, uh... And, and that's about it for me right now, you know what I'm saying? I, I've done music with, with with a lot of heavy hitters, but those those are the three that I'm, I still gotta get, you know, on the catalog. But right now, we, we, we just going on a promotional tour for the record, you know, it's independent. You know, it's a lot of hard work behind it. We want to tour this album, so that's what we basically doing. That's, that's the plan for the next, uh, going into the next year and then dropping the hangover, the album, next year as well. Slaughterhouse is hot, man. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a representative of, of Slaughterhouse, especially that, you know, it's a Detroit native involved in the group. So, you know, I'm, I'm all for it. Ah, oh, man. Crazy story. Okay, uh, it was one time we was um, we was on the anger management tour, and um, I had this bus driver who was driving my tour bus. It was my tour bus. It was Stat Quo on it. His manager, Alchemist, his brother, my security, and a trainer I had for working me out. And um, we had this, this bus driver who, who I believe was a homosexual, big black guy. He had hips, like these huge hips, like a woman, like it was, it was crazy. And this guy was always like laying on the, on the couch, like when you walk up in the bus, laying on the couch right here with his, no socks on, with pants, with his, his toes hanging off the edge of the couch in a fetal position, booty sticking off the couch, face in the window type shit. And he used to always be like, you know, Obi, hey, my my family love you. Real, real feminine type of uh, swag. Try to put me on the phone with his brothers and sisters and shit like that. This guy's like 45, 46, you know, this is a, not a young dude, you know what I mean? And it, he never, ever should go to prison. Uh, it would be a rap for him. He might like it, though. I wanted to get him off the bus, so um, he was supposed to get off the bus in Chicago. Something happened where he, he, he couldn't get replaced because I've been trying to replace him for cities and cities and cities. 
the next stop after Chicago was Colorado, so that was a, a great, that was a long drive, you know. So we had, you know, we had to, uh, they said, well, as soon as we get to Colorado, uh, Obi, I promise we're going to replace your, your, your driver. So I said, fuck it. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to ride the bus with this dude all the way to Colorado. So me, my management, and my security, we, you know, we, we jumped on an airplane and flew out there. And then um, this guy fell asleep and the bus tip, tipped over, flipped over like like four or five times, big ass, massive tour bus. You know, Alchemist brother broke his neck. Um, you know, uh, Stackwo's uh, uh, manager had to get rods in his knee, in his legs. The tour company got sued for a lot of millions, you know, f from that, but. You know, that's crazy. If, if, if the remain us three that flew would have been on the bus, you know, somebody might not have make it, made it, being that there was more more bodies on there, you know? And they, you know, I mean, everything was destroyed. Like, all the bunks came out, you know, it was it was crazy. Yeah, that's, that's on the anger management tour. Music that makes artists is not compromise their integrity. You know, be who you are in your music. You know, that's the, that's the main thing about it. You know, a lot of these guys, it seem like they switch it up for the TV. You know, I think that that's very important. I think, uh, you know, that's something Eminem instilled in me. Um, something that I had in me before Eminem, but, you know, he, he, he took it to another level. You know, and um, that's, that's basically it, man. Just never compromise your integrity and do you. Appreciate it, Jesus.